This is Cord sur Ciel, a village in southwestern France with a history that dates back beyond medieval times. It is barely an hour's ride from the Toulouse based factory of Brosse Superior, a famous motorcycle mark that is also steeped in history. The bike show has visited the Bruff factory and we have marvelled at the quality of the engineering that goes into this modern reincarnation of the brand, unashamedly admiring both the design and the execution of the SS100. And now I'm going to ride it and I almost don't want to, not because it's worth 65,000 euros or just over a million rand. I've ridden loads of bikes that are that expensive or even more so in the past. It's more because I've seen this bike being made in the factory and I've sort of fallen in love with it already and I just, I just don't want the riding experience to turn out to be horrible. So often these beautiful bikes, whether they're one-offs or like this, made in seriously limited numbers, aren't very nice to ride. It's understandable really, there isn't the budget or manpower or resources to pour into the actual testing of a new model like is done by one of the major manufacturers. At some point in the development someone has to say, okay, that'll do, let's just get it made. That doesn't affect the beauty or the delicious engineering details which are good enough for many of the wealthy buyers of these motorcycles who are happy just to celebrate those aspects of their rare purchase. In the case of this Bruff SS100 anniversary special, many owners never even ride them, rather keeping them on display as engineering artworks and preserving them as financial investments to be turned at some point into a profit. That's understandable, I suppose, but if I had the money, I'd want to ride the bike. With so much rarity and beauty and interesting engineering solutions, you can forgive it just about anything. But when you ride it, if it doesn't stop when you need it to, or it doesn't go around a corner when you get to one, they're pretty unforgivable problems. So here's hoping that it doesn't do either of those things. Although much of this bike features unusual engineering, the whole start up and go procedure is reassuringly familiar. A twist of a key, a prod on the starter button and releasing the clutch means I'm off. So far, so good. Leaving Corsair Ciel, I decide to head into the hills. I'm looking for proper biking roads. Roads that will suit a big V-twin and lots of corners just to see if this bike you know, actually behaves like a bike rather than a piece of art that happens to be shaped like a motorcycle. Well, first impressions are generally always about an engine. That's what strikes you immediately. <laughs> and what strikes me immediately about this, my goodness me, it's loud. I can't hear myself think. It's making 100 horsepower standard with the quiet exhaust. Now you lob these on. I mean, obviously there's four, count them. It's only a twin, but there's four exhausts. So, I mean, the sound is like, I don't know, like a multi-engine bomber just sitting on my shoulder here. The maker of all this noise is a 997cc 88 degree V-twin created by Boxer Design specifically Thierry Henriette and it is made by Akira in Bayonne, southwest of France. The same guys who build the all-conquering Kawasaki ZX-10R World Superbike engines. It seems to be reliable too because this is a development bike, a test mule if you like, and it gets used a lot as new bits and pieces are developed for the SS100. Given those specs, you would assume it would be quite a big vibey beast, but absolutely none of it. I don't want to exaggerate, but I think I'm going to have to. Oh, I think I'm going to have to say this is the smoothest V-twin I've ever used. It's unbelievable. There are no vibrations coming through foot pegs or handlebars. 
utterly amazing. The gearbox is super sweet, the clutch is incredibly light, the throttle is a little bit heavy. It's not, it's not off-putting, but you do notice it. And yeah, whether I'm at low RPM or high RPM, I don't know if you can hear the scraping, that's the exhaust touching, which not much lean angle and doesn't make me want to push it. But again, development bike. Whoa, that's tight. The chassis is very clever and light with the engine used as a stressed member and titanium subframes bolted to the front and rear. Suspension at both ends uses, at the moment, for development purposes, air shocks. And at the front, there's a double wishbone setup, versions of which you'll have seen many times before on a variety of BMWs. Perhaps the most amazing thing for me about the handling is, is not that it's so light, relatively precise, doesn't understeer, is the ride quality. It's mad! And that's the air suspension at work. Oh, it's lovely! You need about 10 minutes... Oh dear, hello. You need about 10 minutes or so to realise that it's... You know, it might cost over a million bucks and that makes you a bit nervous. Makes me a bit nervous anyway. But then you realise it behaves perfectly. It responds to everything you want from it, whether that's brakes or turning, combination of the both fistful of throttle and then you can just get on with enjoying it I've reached my destination and unfortunately that means my day's ride is over but it kind of feels like I've been riding through a historical part of France on an piece of English history that's been brought bang up to date by the French. And fortunately, now I've had this ride, I can say hand on heart that this is dynamically a very good bike. It rides well, it rides well enough that it encourages you to have a real good go when you're out on those country roads. And for a naked bike that looks like this, that is the ultimate accolade. It's not pretty, but it is striking. So you'll have to be a kind of outgoing character if you ever get one of these, because wherever you stop, you will end up talking to a lot of people. And there's no wonder, I mean, just look at it. The details are just endless. It's one of those machines that you look at, and the more you look at, the more there is to see. It's absolutely wonderful. It's just a shame it's so amazingly expensive, which means I can't afford one. If you're the sort of person who's lucky enough that you can, I would ask you, why haven't you bought one already? Yes, 60 odd thousand euros is a lot of money, but if you've got that sort of money to spend and you want a truly special motorbike, I don't think there's any bike that can touch it on the planet. It really is that special. If only, if only I had the money, I'd have one in a heartbeat. My wife, my wife does have her life insured though. Hello darling, I was just talking about you.